Good afternoon. Welcome to the Fall Campus Day virtual presentation of the Faculty of Music at the University of Toronto. If by chance you were looking to receive information on the Faculty of Engineering, please look in the chat and there you will find the link that will take you to the virtual Fall Campus Day by the Faculty of Engineering. I'm going to present for about 20 minutes, and then my colleague Jennifer Panasiak, the Admissions and Recruitment Officer, will present for a few minutes. I'm going to speak uh, generally about the programs at the Faculty of Music and uh, some general thoughts on the Faculty of Music and the University of Toronto. And then Jennifer will uh, talk more specifically about application requirements and how to apply. Well, the Faculty of Music is relatively large when it comes to music schools. We have about 900 students in total, 600 of whom are pursuing undergraduate studies and about 300 of whom are pursuing master's or doctoral degrees. Uh, the Faculty of Music is located on the St. George campus, also known as the downtown campus of the University of Toronto. And with a program as large as ours, we are able to offer a wide range of programs across uh, various areas of musical study, from performance to education, composition, various areas of music research. The Faculty of Music uh, and the St. George campus are located uh, near downtown Toronto. Toronto is one of the greatest art cities in North America, and we like to think of it as Canada's cultural capital. As such, we have access to uh, excellent faculty members, both uh, our full-time faculty as well as uh, visiting lecturers, visiting guest artists, uh, who are often able to engage to work with our students when they are coming to uh, Toronto for uh, performances with one of the arts organizations um, in the city. Faculty of Music uh, has two buildings, um, and in uh, these buildings are very specialized facilities that support musical study. Uh, these include the Macmillan Theatre, which uh, is where the opera and orchestral uh, concerts, wind ensemble, wind symphony concerts occur. It seats about 815 people. Also in our facilities is Walter Hall, which is the one uh, shown at the bottom of the slide. Uh, and Walter Hall uh, seats about 450. And this is where most uh, student recitals take place, uh, as well as chamber music concerts. The music library is uh, the largest university uh, music library in Canada and uh, the fourth largest in North America. Uh, and is a, a wonderful resource uh, and has uh, recordings, books, uh, scores, and other uh, formats. And finally, uh, we have a recently renovated electroacoustic music studio, which supports students in uh, recording projects uh, and also uh, in uh, creative projects in, in digital uh, composition. The programs at the undergraduate level um, can be divided into those uh, with a classical focus and those with a jazz focus. Uh, all students entering at the undergraduate level uh, will need to uh, audition in one of these uh, genres. Uh, we offer courses in other areas, uh, but as far as uh, programs, the programs are either in the classical genre or the jazz uh, genre. And listed on this slide are uh, the streams within each area. Uh, and you will notice that uh, some streams are available in both, and some are only uh, available um, in uh, the classical um, stream. Um, and I'm going to elaborate a bit more on uh, each of these programs now. Uh, but before I do so, let me just uh, mention briefly, uh, Jennifer will come back to this, um, that in addition to the OUAC application, there is a supplementary application, the music questionnaire, and all applicants do uh, need to complete an audition on an instrument or voice and uh, an interview. There are various student opportunities uh, at the Faculty of Music. Uh, beyond the programs, 
uh, performance opportunities, which uh, occur in, in various contexts. Um, there are uh, classes that are more focused on career uh, opportunities, and uh, networking is something which is emphasized throughout the, the program. Let's focus first on the Bachelor of Music in Performance. Uh, now, it's important to understand that at the undergraduate level, all of our degree streams have a significant performance element. Uh, all students must take uh, at least two years of one-on-one -on -one, uh, weekly individual lessons on their instrument or voice, and all students in all programs have the option to uh, do so for all four years of study. Uh, the Bachelor of Music in Performance simply has a higher amount of performance activity compared um, to, uh, to other streams. Um, so students in performance will have uh, four years of uh, weekly one-on-one -on -one instruction, four years of large ensemble, uh, and then four years of various other kinds of ensemble activities. Uh, for classical students, those would include uh, chamber music, um, for uh, students in the jazz area, those would be uh, small jazz ensembles or combos. Um, in in uh, both programs, there uh, are weekly uh, master classes, studio classes, and the emphasis uh, really is on preparing students uh, to be high level performers, uh, to be able to perform in a variety of uh, situations uh, from solo to chamber to large ensemble situations. Um, developing related skills uh, in the business of music, uh, and also developing important skills in, uh, in pedagogy, because uh, we know that many of our students who graduate from the performance program will have careers that um, include both performance and education. Bachelor of Music Composition is a program which is only offered um, in the classical stream. It uh, is a program that can be entered directly in first year, or it can be entered in second year. Uh, the special feature of the composition program is that it features weekly composition lessons. Uh, students will still uh, go through two years of study on uh, their instrument or voice, um, but beginning in year two of the program, uh, students will receive uh, weekly composition lessons. There are also a number of courses which are um, specialized, such as counterpoint, uh, orchestration, um, electroacoustic music composition. Um, and there are a few courses which are in genres other than uh, the focus on classical uh, writing. Um, some examples include the course on popular songwriting, a uh, course on composing music for film, uh, and also a course on video game composition. For students who are majoring in composition, a, a, a focus throughout the program is uh, getting one's works performed. And there are several student composer concerts uh, each um, semester. Being located um, in Toronto uh, means that there's a lot of contemporary music happening um, throughout the city. And students in the composition program are especially encouraged uh, to explore those concerts, uh, since listening to a wide range of contemporary music uh, is excellent preparation um, and uh, inspiration for one's own compositions. Um, students in other programs are also able to select a minor in composition, uh, which will provide access to um, courses and also some uh, individual um, composition instruction. Bachelor of Music and Music Education is available to students whose focus is uh, either in classical genre or jazz. Uh, it can be entered directly in uh, year one. Uh, and for students in the classical stream, um, the option of entering um, after the common year, in other words, entering in year two. The Bachelor of Music uh, Education uh, prepares students for teaching in a wide variety of settings. It is not uh, just a uh, program focused on training uh, students for entry into the school system. Uh, graduates from this program might decide to pursue teacher certification um, and uh, teach in the school system, or they might be interested in teaching uh, in a community music setting, uh, a worship 
uh, music uh, setting uh, or going into an area such as music therapy. For those students who are interested in pursuing teacher certification, um, there is an option um, for students in year three to apply to the teacher certification at the University of Toronto at our Faculty of Education, which is called OISE, the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. Uh, the teaching certification program offered at U of T is the Master of Teaching. Uh, and students who are in our Bachelor of Music Education uh, can apply in year three to the Master of Teaching at OISE uh, and therefore learn if they are accepted to that program uh, in year three uh, and can already start working on that um, master's program while in year four of the Bachelor of Music Education. Uh, of course, um, our students also have the option of applying in year four to various Bachelor of Education programs throughout the province of Ontario and gaining teacher certification uh, in that way. Bachelor of Music in History, Culture, and Theory um, is the smallest of our streams. This is only available in the classical program and it is entered in uh, year two. Uh, it is focused uh, especially on research skills, writing skills, presentation skills, uh, and typically this is a program taken by students who are interested uh, in pursuing graduate work in uh, music history, music theory, uh, ethnomusicology, or perhaps going into an area um, like um, library science and working in a library or in an archive. And finally, we have the Bachelor of Music Comprehensive Studies. This is available both in a classical uh, stream and in the jazz stream. Um, and this is our most flexible degree program. Um, there are required courses in years one and two, but then in years three and four, all courses are elective. Um, so this is a great way of combining various interests within music or combining interests in music with an area outside of music. All Bachelor of Music degrees require a minimum of 20 credits. That is five credits a year for four years. Uh, and in most of our other degrees, students will take four credits in uh, the Faculty of Arts and Science and 16 credits in the Faculty of Music. Um, and it's certainly possible to uh, also complete the uh, Comprehensive Studies program with that same um, ratio of courses inside music and outside music. But a distinctive feature of the Comprehensive Studies program is that a higher proportion of courses can be taken outside of music. Specifically, up to eight of the minimum 20 credits may be taken in the Faculty of Arts and Science. So in other words, eight courses in Arts and Science, 12 uh, courses in Music um, would be the uh, minimum way uh, if one wanted to maximize the exposure to courses outside of arts and science. Uh, of course, all of our students can take somewhat above the minimum 20 credits uh, within the, uh, the program fee uh, that students pay um, for their uh, studies. Um, if students are interested in uh, obtaining a minor or a major in uh, an area of arts and science, the comprehensive studies can uh, be a good way of doing it. Uh, since it tends to require uh, fewer credits than combining a minor or major uh, with one of our other degree streams. Um, and it's also sometimes a bit simpler for timetabling, given that years three and year four of the comprehensive studies have no required music courses and all courses taken are elective. You've seen this word common year uh, a few times, and this refers to a uh, first year program for classical students who do not enter uh, another program directly, such as um, the uh, composition program or music education program. Um, and after the completion of the common year, students have a number of options, uh, music education, comprehensive studies, history, culture, and theory. Uh, or can apply to composition by submitting a portfolio or to performance by uh, performing an audition. Um, so the common year provides uh, a way for students to enter a bachelor's degree um, and not make a commitment to a particular stream at the outset, but rather to defer that choice until year two. 
Here's a summary of uh, what I've uh, talked about so far in terms of program structure, organized here in terms of uh, classical entry, uh, Bachelor of Music in Performance, Bachelor of Music, and then uh, the options that one could enter directly, Composition, Music Education, uh, or entering the common year, um, after which any of the uh, various specializations uh, remain available. Similarly, uh, for someone who auditions in jazz, uh, there is the option of entering um, uh, any of uh, these uh, three areas, the performance, music education, or comprehensive studies, uh, all entered directly uh, in year one of the program. Besides the majors, there are minors and certificates available. Minors are typically about four credits out of a 20 credit degree program, and minors are available in um, music history and culture, composition, and for students whose first uh, instrument is piano, uh, there is a minor available in historical keyboard. Uh, in other words, for some cross training on harpsichord and uh, an organ. Certificates uh, are smaller. Certificates are about one and a half credits out of 20 credits. Um, and these are offered in areas uh, where we don't uh, typically have a, a major or a minor. Um, I've listed them here on the screen, health applications in music. Uh, so this is a, a set of courses which focus uh, on um, music in uh, health contexts. Um, so in other words, an introduction to, uh, to music therapy, um, but also uh, performers health. And we offer a, a few courses which focus um, especially on, on prevention of uh, performance related repetitive stress injury. Uh, music technology uh, focused here uh, both on recording and also on, on creative digital composition. Popular music studies and ethnomusicology. Uh, this is a certificate which combines um, academic courses um, that look at popular music and music of various cultures around the world, uh, but also uh, allow for performance in, uh, in our ensembles that focus on global musics. Um, we have uh, several ensembles, uh, for example, Japanese taiko drumming, um, steel pan, uh, klezmer ensemble, West African drumming and dancing, uh, Caribbean music ensemble. Uh, and lastly, uh, we have a certificate in piano pedagogy. Um, this is again available uh, specifically to students whose uh, major instrument is piano. Student experience. Uh, we are a close-knit community. Students um, will see the same cohort of students uh, all throughout the day. If we think about a uh, first-year experience, um, students are taking the same classes, music theory, uh, ear training, music history, um, large ensemble, choir, orchestra, band, uh, jazz band, um, and the classes tend to be relatively small. The largest class we have at the Faculty of Music is the first year music history class, which has about 150 students. Um, I teach music theory. Um, and uh, typically have classes somewhere between 30 and 60 students. Uh, and many of our classes are only 20 or 30 students. Um, as such, uh, our students have access to uh, a tight network of peers and faculty who uh, are supportive throughout all aspects of their, uh, of their studies. Uh, most faculty will know their students on a first name basis. Um, the staff in our registrar's office is relatively small and uh, will also get to know students very well um, as uh, they go through uh, course registration, course selection processes, uh, and are there to assist students uh, with other kinds of, uh, of issues such as, as financial issues or connecting uh, students to various resources throughout the, uh, the campus. Um, Although the Faculty of Music is small, the St. George campus is very large, which means that there are um, a lot of clubs that students can join across campus. There are many services, such as health services, um, uh, recreation uh, services, um, uh, career center, uh, and, uh, and so on. 
I think at this point, I'm going to turn things over now to uh, my colleague, Jennifer Panasiak, our admissions and recruitment officer, um, to speak a bit more uh, specifically about the application um, process. Jennifer. Hi, everybody. I'm not sure. Can you see me okay? <laughs> or hear me? Um, yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Uh, so my name is Jennifer Panasiak. I'm the undergraduate admissions and recruitment officer at the Faculty of Music. And I will just um, go briefly through um, some of the requirements in order to apply to the Faculty of Music. Um, so we do have, um, if you could move forward to the next slide, Ryan, that would be great. Um, so initially we have admission requirements. Um, so we have of those admission requirements, there's academic requirements. Um, some music requirements and some program specific requirements. Next slide. And so the academic requirements. So if you're an Ontario high school student, uh, we're looking for an Ontario secondary school diploma or equivalent. Um, and that will need to include six grade 12 U or M courses and English for you is a required course. If you're from outside of Ontario or if you're a post-secondary applicant from Ontario, you can look on the website of the Office of Admissions and Outreach, um, and that's future.utoronto.ca, and the academic requirements are specific um, by program, or sorry, by province, uh, by country, that sort of thing. And then if you are required to um, meet English language requirements, there's also information there as well. Next slide. So in terms of the uh, music requirements, so all applicants are required to do an audition and interview. Um, applicants can choose to audition in person or via recorded audition and a Zoom interview. So there's no distance requirement. You, you can choose to do in person or recorded no matter where you live. Uh, we do encourage people from the GTA to do in-person auditions if possible. Um, and then there will be repertoire requirements specific to the instrument and program uh, to which you are applying. And then in terms of music requirements as well, there's a music theory prerequisite. So we base um, our prerequisites on the Royal Conservatory of Music. So for classical applicants, we're looking for RCM level eight theory um, or equivalent. We also encourage you to take the RCM level nine harmony if possible. And it helps to um, ease you into theory courses in first year. If you're a jazz applicant, all jazz applicants will write the entrance theory exam for jazz. And then there are some specific uh, program specific requirements. So if you're a jazz applicant, there is a pre-screening process. So um, those applicants are required to submit a video for pre-screening. Successful applicants are invited to audition in person. Uh, for composition applicants, if they're looking to get into direct entry, um, they are required to submit a portfolio of their works. And if you're applying for piano performance or artist diploma, um, then you are required to uh, learn and play a quick study at your audition. Next slide. So for the application process for music, it's a two-part process. So everybody has to apply through the Ontario University's Application Center, uh, submit an application for, for there. Uh, through there. And you, I tell applicants to think of that as your application to the University of Toronto. And then everybody is required to do a music questionnaire, which is our supplementary application. It will be available on our website on November 11th. Um, you fill out that application and that's how we set up your audition interview, how we receive your jazz pre-screening, your portfolios, etc. So for the supplementary application. So the music questionnaire, it, as I said, it's in addition to the OUAC application. Uh, there is a fee of uh, $65 per audition and interview. Um, and you can complete the OUAC and the music questionnaire in any order. You don't need to have your applicant ID in order to submit your music questionnaire. So we encourage people to apply early. And if we look at the next slide, we'll have a look at the deadlines. So important dates for 2023. So the music questionnaire, the OUAC application, and the jazz pre-screening, the deadline is all January the 12th. If you are applying by recorded audition and Zoom interview, the recorded audition deadline is February 1st. 
The in-person audition interviews also begin February 1st, and we give uh, the composition applicants until the 1st of February to also submit their portfolio. And then if we go to the next slide, we'll just briefly cover a little bit about scholarships. So um, there are divisional scholarships and central scholarships. So for applicants, applicants for divisional scholarships, applicants are automatically considered for the Faculty of Music Entrance Scholarships. They do vary anywhere from $500 to full tuition. They're awarded based on academic merit and or performance during, um, during your audition. We do encourage all domestic applicants to complete the UTAP's estimated form. Um, and that is um, University of Toronto Advanced Planning for Students. So it's just the estimator form. And we use that to determine fin financial need for admission scholarship consideration um, in the absence of uh, having people apply for OSAP. Then centrally, there's a number of awards that are also awarded. Um, some do not require application and some do. Um, so they offer awards on the basis of financial need, academic merit, demonstrated leadership and other specific criteria by application. So in order to be considered for those awards, we encourage you to complete the awards profile. Um, and that's found on the Join U of T portal. And you can follow the uh, awards profile link to fill that out. And that will just increase your uh, chances to be considered for scholarships. And then last but not least, on the final slide, I'll just say a quick note about Oh, oh, you might have to click one more time, Ryan. Sorry. I think that's a remnant of, oh, or a few times. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. Um, so residents, I just want to reiterate, please apply for residents if you think at all that you might be interested in it. Um, you need to apply by March 31st. It is guaranteed for new full-time students entering their first year of university in an undergraduate program for the first time. But you do have to meet all the application deadlines and the response deadlines that are listed there. Um, so we do encourage you, even if you think you might be remotely interested in residence, please apply. You can always say no later. Um, it's better than um, losing your guarantee if you decide later on that you would like to stay in residence. Um, in terms of residence options for music students, Victoria, House, uh, Victoria College houses a, a large number of our music students. But we do also have students staying in all the other residences, um, St. Michael's College, Trinity College, University College, College, and Chestnut Residence. Um, so that's just a reminder to also look at applying to that. Um, and I think that's the end of it uh, for me at this point. Um, we encourage you to contact us at undergrad.music at utoronto.ca if you have any questions. Um, our website's listed there. Uh, and the process of being updated. Um, so it should be updated by next Saturday um, when we have the in-person fall campus day. And um, we encourage you, if you are in the GTA, do come down um, for our in-person fall campus day. Um, I'll post uh, a link in the chat there for you to look at. Um, it lists everything that's going on during the day. Um, and also there's some opportunities to play and perform if you're interested. Um, and that's it for me. So Ryan, invite you back and uh, we can have a look at the questions. So maybe I'll I'll uh, read it out and decide who will who will answer. <laughs> um, so the first question comes from Carissa. How many students apply to the U of T Faculty of Music per year and how many students do you accept? So this varies uh, from year to year, the number of students um, who uh, apply. Uh, what doesn't vary is the number of students that we're, we're looking to, uh, to enroll. We're looking for an entering class of uh, somewhere around 140 or 150 students. Uh, typically, that's around 30 students in jazz and around 110 to 120 um, in the classical um, uh, streams. Um, so that's what we're looking as our, our entering class. 
Um, and uh, so we, you know, we have several hundred uh, students audition, and then we uh, we make offers to qualified applicants, uh, and then we we work to get a, a good balance of, of of students so that we uh, we have not only uh, an entering number of around 140 to 150, but also the right mix of instruments. So we have uh, instruments for uh, for an orchestra, for a wind ensemble, uh, wind symphony, uh, and uh, the right uh, jazz instruments as well to have. Uh, jazz ensembles, jazz combos. Great, thanks, Ryan. Um, here's a question from Alex. Um, could someone in a classical course join a jazz ensemble if they're interested, or can classical students only join classical ensembles and jazz students jazz ensembles? So we do allow for this kind of crossover uh, activity to take place. Um, every year students audition uh, or, um, for their ensemble placement uh, into uh, orchestra or band. Um, and it's it's possible um, that one might not take uh, four years of uh, classical ensemble that one could uh, request to take uh, a year in a, in a jazz ensemble. Um, so uh, this sort of crossover is possible. Um, and uh, we certainly do encourage students to, uh, to explore um, uh, classical students especially to explore jazz uh, performance courses and uh, academic courses. Uh, we, we do have, uh, have some courses that are open, certainly, so classical students can get exposure to, uh, to the jazz idiom, either in terms of theory or uh, improvisation. Great, thank you. And Carissa asks, will the Faculty of Music look at my RCM marks since they require an official transcript of all my RCM examinations? Uh, so we don't look at RCM grades uh, during the admissions process. The admissions process is based on the, uh, the audition, interview, uh, and also your high school uh, marks. Uh, what we do use the RCM transcript for is uh, for, for uh, the theory prerequisite for students who are in the classical stream, uh, so that if we uh, see that you have uh, a grade um, uh, in uh, rudiments on there or, or higher RCM exams in theory, uh, then you do not need to write our uh, classical entrance theory um, test. But as far as uh, as admission and what, what your RCM grades are, uh, or if you've even done RCM, that doesn't matter. Uh, the focus during our admissions process is on the audition, the interview, and your high school grades. Great, thank you. Um, let's do this one from Carissa. On average, how many students that applied for the Faculty of Music play piano or keyboard as their main instrument? Um, so again, it varies a bit from year to year, uh, but if we're talking about uh, among the 110, 120 students entering the classical stream, I would say in a typical year, um, between 30 and 40 of those students are, uh, are keyboard players. Uh, now, it's important to remember that that uh, includes students in all um, programs. Uh, so perhaps 10 of those students might be in, um, piano performance and 10 might be in music education, but with piano as a major instrument and, and five might be in composition and 10 might be going into, you know, comprehensive studies. Um, but I would say uh, ab about a third of students, between a quarter and a third of all students in the classical stream uh, have piano as their major instrument. Thanks, Ryan. Um Here's a question from Alex, and Alex, I think you corrected your question the second time through, so I'm going to ask this question. If you actually meant to say science, um, please rewrite it again. Um, so Alex would like to know, does comprehensive music allow for one-on-one, -on -one, or allow for one to still perform in ensembles and receive one-on-one -on -one instruction, or is that not available? Uh, yes, all of our undergraduate programs uh, involve the possibility of uh, four years of one-on-one -on -one instruction and four years of playing uh, in ensembles. That is required if you are in performance or music education, uh, but if you are in one of the other programs, um, you are eligible 
to uh, choose to uh, keep doing uh, one on one lessons in year three and also in year four and to keep uh, playing an ensemble in the upper years of the program. Great. And Chris is wondering what grade average or GPA is needed to be accepted into the Faculty of Music. So, so the, again, the grade uh, cutoff uh, will vary from year to year. Um, and, you know, we don't have a firm number. The vast majority of students coming to the Faculty of Music have uh, grades in the 80s and 90s. Um, but it, it varies from, from year to year and uh, varies sometimes between uh, specific programs, specific instruments. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's really not possible to say that there's a specific cutoff. Part of the reason is the fact that our admissions process involves an audition and an interview. So it's very different from applying to uh, some other bachelor uh, programs where uh, the admission decision is largely made on, on high school grades alone uh, because uh, there's nothing as personalized as an audition or an interview uh, during the process uh, if one is, is applying to um, uh, most undergraduate programs uh, other than, than something like music. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, and here's a question from, I think it's Hendrika. Um, I don't, I have a very few musical background and I'm far from a professional, but I would like to continue having music lessons while pursuing another degree in art, the arts faculty. Um, are there any classes I could take that would suit students like me at U of T? So we do offer um, a range of musical experiences for students in the Faculty of Arts and Science. Um, we offer a minor in uh, music history and culture, uh, which consists of, of four um, credits out of 20. Uh, now the minor in music history and culture has no uh, performance activity. It, it's a larger lecture-based courses um, in classical music, uh, global musics, and popular music. Uh, we do offer both a major and a specialist to students who are in the uh, Bachelor of Arts in Arts and Science. Um, and those programs uh, involve taking the same uh, music history, uh, music theory courses um, uh, with Bachelor of Music students. Uh, and they also uh, have an ensemble option. So students who are in the Bachelor of Arts music major or music specialist can take up to two years of large ensemble. Um, so choir, orchestra, band. Um, however, um, those programs that we offer to students in the Faculty of Arts and Science do not include one-on-one -on -one lessons. So that would be something um, that uh, you would not be able to do for credit towards your degree, uh, but it's certainly something that um, we would be happy to uh, facilitate connecting uh, you with a, with a, a, a teacher. Um, perhaps one of our um, master's or doctoral students uh, would uh, be eager to take on um, uh, you as a private student, uh, but the uh, paying for that would be entirely between you and, and the teacher, and it would not be anything that would appear on, on your transcript or count as credit um, towards um, your degree. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and there's one more question here. Um, since the Faculty of Music requires a supplemental application, should I include all of the extracurricular activities, awards, and volunteer experience I do or have, as well if I take any music-related electives at school, such as concert or jazz band, will the faculty look at this as well? Um, yeah, so there is a, a supplementary um, application, which is our music questionnaire, uh, and there is space in the music questionnaire for, for listing uh, various musical uh, activities or awards, and there's also a place for a short uh, essay on uh, what your goals are. Uh, so it's certainly um, good to uh, include those things in, uh, in your application. Um, oftentimes, uh, if you do have that kind of information there, it's something that um, uh, will come up in the, in the interview and, and will be something that uh, the, the faculty members doing the interview might, might refer to and might uh, 
uh, talk to you uh, to you about. So uh, if you do have uh, those kinds of musical experiences um, in, in high school, it is it is a good idea to uh, to mention them when you're filling out the music questionnaire. Thanks, Ryan. Um, let's see, we have about four minutes left. Uh, so maybe I will, we often get the question uh, from students or prospective students asking if they need to be able to play the piano uh, to apply. So maybe if you would like to talk about that. for a Sure. Of uh, so there is no piano um, requirement to enter the faculty of music. Um, you are required to have some basic piano skills um, before you leave the degree. Um, so anyone who comes into the program and does not have uh, some piano uh, skills will be uh, will take uh, a keyboard skills class during the first year uh, of the program. Um, and uh, if, if you do have some piano skills, but you're not a pianist, um, uh, you are able in the fall of the first year to take a, a, an exemption test if, if you uh, don't think you need um, the keyboard skills class. Um, but there, there's no requirement to have keyboard skills coming into the program. Uh, you know, it's certainly helpful to, uh, to build uh, keyboard skills. Uh, we find that students who have some basic abilities at the keyboard find, um, you know, the uh, music theory and ear training classes uh, a bit easier. Um, but it's, it's a skill that, that, that we're happy for students to work on during uh, their first year in the program and, and not to worry if, if you are coming into the program and you've never had any, any piano training. Um, so it doesn't look like there's any more questions at the moment. Um, so maybe we could just say once again that um, we invite you to come to Fall Campus Day in person if you are in the vicinity. Um, obviously, if you're overseas, um, <laughs> you might not be able to make the trip next week. Um, but uh, Callista has posted uh, the link in the chat there if anybody um, would like to click on that and see what's going on next weekend, or weekend in person. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, Ryan? I I don't think I, <laughs> I do. Um, just uh, to... Uh, say to everyone out there uh, that uh, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to be in touch with uh, with Jennifer and the team in the undergraduate admissions and recruitment office. Um, and uh, I look forward uh, to uh, hopefully receiving lots of, of applications from those of you on the, uh, the webinar uh, today. And um, uh, wish everyone uh, a, a good rest of their day. <laughs>